Hello everyone, this is Matthias from Interactive Asia. This is part two of our Vento 6.7 quick start tutorial. In this tutorial, we will going a little bit to meet the Ventus designer. Yeah, and hopefully we are soon able to create stuff like that. Okay guys, let's jump right in and let's start together. Okay guys, let's start now our Ventus Designer. I'm running here on the Ventus Community Edition. That's that free version, what I explained to you in the first part of this tutorial. And uh, once you open it, you will see your project browser. In the project browser, we just simply click now onto a new project. Actually double click. And then we have here our new uh, create new project assistant right so let's give him a name here let's uh, tell us uh, tell tell this project here quick start part two exactly then we can assign a folder a project folder so let's do that too so i don't want to have the default folder pass i want to put it on the desktop and I created an empty folder here on the desktop already. I call that Ventus project and inside here I will create now my Ventus project, right? So this is now here on the C on my desktop and here we go here. We can give uh, whatever some author's name and copyright, but that's not uh, important for now. You can change the resolution here, but also don't worry about that because uh, it's super flexible. Later on, we can change uh, the resolution for the application uh, in, in the configuration editor. <coughs> and we also can assign a, a project icon if we want to. So that's all for now. Let's click OK. And here we are now presented with the Ventus Designer user interface. So before I go into details here, I show you quickly what we created just on the desktop. Basically the project folder, because I think that's also pretty important from the very beginning. So if I go into my folder, then you can see uh, Ventus created here that folder quick start part two. That's basically my name of the project. If I go inside here, then we see here a lot of folders. So don't worry about that. This is pretty cool because uh, in, in these folders you can really later on uh, navigate easily and and put uh, textures, images, content basically, uh, movies uh, which you will uh, build into your application. You can then really drag and drop it directly wherever you want it. Or you just uh, take it from whatever location on your computer and Ventus will automatically copy it into the specific folders. Yeah? So movies to the movies folder. Um, scenes of course to the scenes so this is our uh, Ventus project this is our main file okay and uh, each Ventus project can has can have a lot of scenes yeah and all that scenes we are building now during this uh, yeah during this uh, part of our tutorial here so if we are clicking to scenes so for now we don't have a scene but here we will have later on the different scenes what we will develop Okay, let's get back into the Ventus Designer. <coughs> so here we go. So the Ventus Designer looks at the first few a little bit heavy, but it's actually, yeah, don't get worried too much about that. So of course we have here our, our main menu bar where you can, uh, for example, this button, you know, here you can get into the uh, project settings. Yeah, for example, what I tell you before with that watermark, right? So if you go here to logo watermark, that's actually that watermark down here. Here you can change stuff like that. And of course, save, open, load scenes, um, different views. Um, then we have here our layer editor. Yeah, In this layer editor, um, we can create um, as many layers as we want. Yeah, If we go here to that little plus, then we have here a couple of different uh, functionalities. I will get more into details about that later on in the tutorial. But basically, uh, for now, uh, if we if we use one 3D layer for for this tutorial today, we are we are happy with that. So here we don't have to care too much about this for for today. Also here, that stage editor is not important. What it is what is important is here the hierarchy editor, and in this hierarchy editor, we will basically make most or a lot of development. 
as well as here in the content editor. So the easy way how I learned that or how I uh, could remember uh, the difference between these two editors. Yeah? So, so Ventus is basically a node-based uh, software. That means that everything what we can see later on, right? Everything, every texture, every movie, ever, ever, any geometry, uh, we will basically put here in the hierarchy editor. And all the logic, so things what we cannot see, like movers, like animations, like scripts, we will put here in the content editor. And then uh, on the right side, we have here our properties editor with inputs and outputs. I will very soon go into details with that. And of course, last but not least, we have here our render output. Yeah? So this is really whatever we are doing here, whatever we develop in Ventus, we can see that immediately here in our render window, basically. Uh, here on top, we have a couple of different options or different buttons uh, where we can swap uh, the layout of that window. So if we click to the design view, then we can see that we have a, a very large render window and uh, just here the, our layer, layers on the left side. <coughs> if we go to the logic, yeah, that's uh, what we will use mostly because what we are doing is development with logic. We're developing logic, right? Um, we have here the animate view. Uh, where we will get then here our animation uh, uh, window and we have here the data view which is pretty similar to the logic uh, except uh, yeah that the, the size is maybe a little bit bigger but uh, and of course here the scene data changes so let's jump back to the logic one of the very very important of the most important windows which you can't see by default is actually the toolbox so if you click to view, then you will find here the toolbox and click on that. So this is a very, very important part because the toolbox has all the nodes which we can use to develop things, logic, graphics, animations, inventors. Yeah? So this is a very important part. Without that, and as a beginner, you will be just lost. There are other ways how you can find that or how you can uh, create nodes, but uh, at the very beginning you need to have this toolbox. That's very, very important. So let's find a nice place for that. As you can see, when I move uh, a hovering window, then uh, Vendus gives me the options where I want to put it or dock it, right? So in this case, I will dock it down here and I will make here my render window a little bit bigger. So this should be okay for now. and. Then let's quickly go together here through the toolbox. So in this toolbox, you can find uh, by categ uh, it's, it's categorized basically. Uh, you can find all the nodes uh, which are responsible for reading and writing data, yeah, connection to an Excel workbook or a JSON parser or connection to a text file or to a database. Yeah, if you right click, <coughs> then you uh, will get more options, whatever whatever node it is. Then we have here textures, right? A image, uh, a texture, a flipbook, uh, and many, many other things. We have here our color and materials, yeah, solid colors or really materials, fog, HLSL shaders, stuff like that. Even substance is now uh, they have a nice interface to 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 substance. Uh, we have here logic uh, to for for to integrate sound. Yeah, we have. Uh, we have nodes for scripts, yeah. So this is also a very, very powerful uh, folder. Basically, we have here text. We have inputs and outputs. We have animation nodes. We have geometry nodes, yeah, basic geometries. We have interaction nodes. We have here VR and AR nodes. We have uh, render options for for some special blendings or, or other effects. We have here our light. We have. Uh, world in this world uh, one of the most used uh, nodes in Vendor is pretty much the axis <coughs> and then we have here our slides and the layers so this is basically the yeah this is basically it what you need to know um, to start developing in Ventus so let's do that now let's do that now and the very first thing what we will do now I just will show you what will happen if we just use a simple geometry into this scene right so let me drag and drop a cube so you just left click and drag and drop that cube here into that hierarchy right so you can see if we go here this is the root basically this top left little thingy here now it's down 
um, this is basically our root of the sea yeah so if i drag and drop and release it here so now we have here already our node and you can see here now our node or sorry our cube basically is now here in the render window so you can see now we cannot see that cube anymore <coughs> so what happened now i i uh, by accident clicked here some of that uh, of that buttons so what i can do now i can go into i can click here this little uh, pen yeah that will bring me into this node right so let's say i'm now on layer level or i also can actually click here and then i'm also no sorry that was wrong then i also have my layer here now so from here to here i can swap a little bit the layer views right and uh, because sometimes you also can connect layers to each other but more about that later so basically if you work you mostly work inside a layer so click this little little pen and now we are here inside that layer right okay so this is now the hierarchy this is our first hierarchy node also important to know um, you see this nodes the brackets left and side left and right open left and close on the right side that means these are hierarchy nodes okay so that means all these nodes you can drag and drop here into this hierarchy window and let's go now quickly to another one let's go here to uh, animation for example and the mover and here you can see all that animation nodes they have the the brackets on the bottom and on the top right so these nodes you cannot drop in the hierarchy these nodes you just can drop in the content yeah? so this is basically the difference between uh, between these two editors yeah? so we have the hierarchy nodes and we have the content nodes and later on we also will have a couple of layer nodes okay then let's go back to our first node what we created so we can see here our cube now let's select my cube here in the hierarchy and uh, once i select it you can see this property window will change so let me click this and now we can see we have the name cube one it's a geometry renderer and uh, we have here a couple of properties right so this is for example the size x y and z if i left click on a property and i move my mouse left and right then I can immediately see the changes in our render window, right? So this is basically uh, the properties. So every node in Ventus has its own properties. So now you probably want to say how I can move and rotate my cube now because we are in a 3D world. It's a 3D tool, a 3D real-time tool. So how I can move this cube. So the cube itself don't have uh, any properties uh, to, to change the position, yeah? For this we have another special node and we are going now to the world and we are using our first axis and drag and drop it in front of our cube yeah? so if i drag and drop it in front of our cube and i select my axis now we have all the properties from our axis right so this is the position x right the position in y and z then we have the rotation in x we have the Y rotation, the Z rotation, and we have scalings, right? Scaling in X, Y, and Z, and a, and a master scaling factor, basically, which then uh, scales uh, yeah, all these three values uh, um, uh, equally, basically. <coughs> so this is now our first axis with a cube behind. Um, what you also need to know if you have here if you change the value from default then you will have this little uh, circle here behind if you click this then uh, this property will be set back to default right so let's click here let's click here and let's go to our cube so we changed here the size as well so bring that back and now we have here our cube now I want to make that cube a bit bigger so I just bring up here my scaling factor right and now let's rotate it over the y-axis and rotate it a little bit over the x and now you can see we have here our first cube regarding these uh, values of course you can double click and can put in numbers manually over your keyboard but uh, there are a couple of shortcuts uh, which are at the beginning a little bit uh, confusing actually not confusing you just have to remember them so if you click to the position and you move it yeah, and you don't press any other button then you will have uh, you can make pretty large movements right sometimes you need to make very very small movements if you want to make smaller movements then just move it and press and hold control 
Yeah, so still pressing my left mouse button and move it left right and now I also press control now you can see we make smaller steps and now I still hold control and additionally I press to shift so that means I press control plus shift together and now we can make much smaller movements right so these uh, two buttons are very important for the beginning to make nice little cool uh, adjustments for your scene right so let me get into uh, yeah let me show you a little bit more of that uh, geometry is what we have inside ventus for example geometry we have here a rectangle right so the rectangle has x size and a y size for example if i want to put a, a 60 by 9 picture here i would probably give uh, my rectangle size of 60 by 9 right because then I know already okay the aspect ratio fits perfectly now with my geometry um, exactly so if I put here another axis now in front let's do that let's put another axis then we can rotate it a little bit here then we can see it's really just a, a 2d plane right exactly <coughs> so let's use a little other node what else can we use du -du 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 -du. geometry let's say we use maybe now let's use a, let's use a cylinder so let's use that cylinder and make the whole scaling a bit bigger let's bring it here back let's see where we are okay here we are and you see mostly i play here with the axis because with that axis you quickly can uh, change uh, yeah, whole worlds in rotation, in position and in scale. So let's see what settings we have here with our cylinder. So our cylinder has a size X, a size Y, right? And uh, of course a size S set, sorry, and we can give it a hole, right? And we can make it a bit smaller. And now we have a ring. So let's use another quick one. So now I already did something what I actually did not want to do, but I'm using Ventus since quite some, some years. So uh, uh, if you are familiar with all the names of the Ventus nodes, yeah, and you are in the hierarchy editor, in the content editor, and you click the spacebar, yeah, then you will have this little search window. If you click here, then uh, you can uh, basically find nodes by category or this is actually what I prefer. I say switch to alphabetical mode because I know most of the nodes already. So again, spacebar, and then I say, okay, I want to axis, right? I just uh, type A, X, I, and then I have axis here. I drag and drop it here, and let's use another circle, and let's put that circle there in the center somewhere, and let's bring that back, exactly. So let's make that circle a bit bigger, and now let's say, hey, I want that my axis here from the that my ring is basically a little bit rotated over the x-axis but now I also want that my circle has the same rotation right so of course I have here the axis which uh, is responsible for my tube and I have the axis which is responsible for my cylinder so both of these axes are a separate path so in Vendus mm, Vendus always calculates from from the from top to bottom and from left to the right yeah so that means this axis is just responsible for this tube now right this axis is just responsible for that cylinder so now let's see what happens if i put this axis behind this axis right so i basically put it here so what happened now let's bring it back that we can see it a little bit more clear so here my circle is facing straight to the camera right because we have a zero rotation right so if I rotate it here but it's zero so that means that circle is facing now straight to my camera if I move that axis now let's check it here here this one has a rotation of 70 right so let's put it back to 70 so that means if I now drag and drop that axis here then my circle will get all the values from this axis because this axis is now also responsible for the tube and for this axis and everything behind right so that means this axis has already a scaling of 9.7 so that means that scaling gets added to my 7.12 circle scaling right and also here the rotation the rotation gets also added to my x rotation from this cylinder uh, sorry from that circle basically so if I bring that back to one, 
then everything is good. If I scale up now my master axis, let's call it master axis, yeah. And uh, now you can see, now we can fully control both our tube and our circle. And of course, now I can offset my circle right in X and Y. I can say hey, that circle should be above my ring. And if I rotate it now, then we have this kind of construct. <coughs> so this is pretty powerful, this uh, technique. This is really powerful in Ventus and you really can uh, build pretty cool, crazy stuff with that. So um, I think for part two, this should be good already. So go on and play with all that notes. Yeah, Don't be shy, you cannot damage anything. Really just go through it and uh, check what uh, all the notes can do, right? For example, also a quick tip, uh, if you want to block something or if you sometimes not sure where you are, I, I give you a little hint, that's control B, right? Then you just can basically block something fully out that is not rendered then anymore. That's in a huge scene sometimes pretty cool to to quickly uh, figure out, hey, what, what, what is... Uh, what is this part of my scene and of course also a very important part is here double click on any node and give it a name let's call it root and let's call it circle uh, because later on in the next tutorials you will see that it is very very important to have uh, very clear structures in your scenes especially if the scenes are getting very huge and complex and uh, Sometimes you have to work in teams of many people in, in one scene or even put scenes uh, together or interact between different uh, Ventus scenes. So for this, uh, for this reason it's very, very important that you learn from the very beginning to handle it uh, clearly with good comments in your scene during development. Okay guys, I hope uh, that was a little bit fun. In the next tutorial we will get much more fun. Um, until then, see you, cheerio, bye bye.